Hi everyone, welcome again. In the last video, we covered the basics of Spring Cloud function. We saw how can we write simple functions, and we also saw how can we execute them as a standalone program. We exposed two functions in different ways. One was defined as a bean in the same class, and one was defined as a separate class by implementing the function interface. And to scan this function, we had to add a new property, which is scan dot packages, where we define the package where the runtime can find the functions. All right. And because it was running as a standalone program, we had to use this runner bean. And here we were using function catalog to look up the methods in order to run them. Now let's see how can we convert the same project in order to expose the functions as web endpoints. So the first thing is we don't need this runner anymore. So we can comment it. The second thing is we don't need this dependency anymore. We need to add a new dependency. So let's add that. And this new dependency is Spring Cloud Starter Function Web. This is coming from Spring Cloud. So this dependency is needed to expose the functions as web endpoints. Let's reload the project to download the new dependencies. And that's it. We have not changed anything else. We just commented the command line runner, removed the old dependency, and added the new one. So let's run the program and see how simple is it to run the same function as a web endpoint now. And notice the same project has now started as a web application running on 8080 port. Now that we have a running web application, how do we access the functions? Earlier we were able to do that by using function catalog. But how do we access the same function now? Well, the thing is all these functions are exposed as web endpoints same as REST APIs and each function has a URL. That means the URL of each function is the root URL, which is localhost colon 8080 in this case slash and then the name of the function. So let's open the postman and test these function calls. In the postman, we will open a new tab. This is going to be a get request. Then the root URL, which is localhost colon 8080 and then the name of the function so if we want to access this function this is the name of the function and that's what we need to provide here and if we hit enter we don't see any value why because we have not provided any string input and notice it needs a string in order to return its length so how do we provide how do we provide the input well because this is basically a get request a get method so in order to pass the input, we will use the path parameter. So let's say we pass it a string value. Hello. And if we send a request, we get the output 5. That means the length of the string. So that's how we access the function as web endpoint as a REST API. And that's how we pass the values to the function as path parameters. Let's now try to access the second function as well, which is defined as a separate class. And we know the name of this function is to uppercase but in camel case, which is this one. And we can access this function in the same way to uppercase name of the function and the input. And if we send another request, we see the output world but in uppercase. That means we successfully called this second function as well. So you can see this is very simple by adding a new dependency we can expose the same function as web endpoints. What we need to remember is in order to access a function, we need to pass the function name, which becomes the endpoint of that function. All right. And how do we pass the input parameter by using the path variables? And notice these are all get methods by default. And in the same way, we can implement a fully functional CRUD application using functions. We already implemented the read part because all these methods, all these functions are get calls. So that is the read part of CRUD and similarly we can implement create, update and delete methods. We can write the functions to support those operations and we can expose them as web endpoints. The only thing is we need to use the appropriate function. So let's see how can we do that. To do that we will go to the documentation of Spring Cloud which is under Spring Cloud and here you can find the Spring Cloud function and if we go to the documentation Go to the reference guide and here it is. So the thing is in order to implement the get, 
we need to use the supplier we can do the same thing with function that we just did and similarly to implement let's say the create update or delete part more specifically the post calls we can use the consumer or the function and for put we can use the consumer or function and for delete we can use the consumer there you can find the mappings of functions or specifically the functional interfaces and the corresponding http method what we implemented is basically this row get calls using function and similarly by providing the correct function we can implement other operations like post put and delete and that's how we can expose a fully functional cred applications using spring cloud function so that's pretty much everything on spring cloud function as of now thanks for watching